I'm Anthony Kraus, sculptor living in Woodstock, New York, and we're here at my studio and my outdoor sculpture garden, and we're doing the tour. So we'll start off uh, with some of my outdoor three-dimensional mirrored reflective pieces. My guest today is Anthony Kraus. He is a sculptor, an artist, a gentleman who creates form at, for the rest of us to appreciate. And you've done this all over the world, haven't you? Yes, throughout Asia and Europe now, and uh, it's been a very exciting experience. This, it throws that orange color all the way across the lawn to up the side of my house. And in, depending on the time of year, when the sun moves around, it hits it from the other side, and it sends the color right up <laughs> the side of the house. By using a rectangle, you're putting a frame around nature, in the case of reflective surfaces, so that it seems like uh, against the natural forms, which are more fluid and more amorphous, you have a specific area that focuses your attention. And that's really what I believe geometry can do. I began as a painter many years ago, and the work became three-dimensional. I started doing three-dimensional canvases then I started adding other elements and mirrors and reflective and I realized the beauty of the reflective surfaces are that the viewer, yourself, you become part of the piece as well as all of nature. And since nature is continually changing the different times of year, you get all different types of reflections that come into play. So it becomes an interactive piece in the sense that it's not merely an object sitting outside, but it's taking in everything around it. Well, my mother discovered me as a child, as I always tell people. She saw me copying something out of a cartoon book, and she said, oh my God, you know, and can you draw? And I started sketching the family, and one thing led to the other. And I was fortunate enough to apply to the High School of Music and Art in New York, and I was accepted. And on weekends, I studied at the Art Students League, in Manhattan on 57th Street and I was the youngest pupil at that time to begin with Alice Harold Murphy. I was a captain in the infantry eventually. This was in the uh, 50s into the 60s. When I graduated Syracuse University I, w I went through ROTC and I was commissioned as second lieutenant in the infantry and I went to, I, I, was, I always tell people I joined the army to see the world. I went from Fort Dix to Fort Benning to Fort Bragg to Fort Devens. <laughs> but it was an interesting experience. I was made uh, head of the art department designing billboards and posters. So it was at the last leg of my service where they made use of my abilities. Earlier on, I was a range officer and uh, taught riflery at Fort Benning. And this is a piece I did in Japan for a, r a rooftop in Tokyo, and that overlooks the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train in Japan. Wow. I was in Japan nine times in nine years doing commissions. I'm in collections all over the world. My work has been very well received. In my constant search for the aesthetic statement that would portray the essence of life and technology, I see an abstract arrangement of reflective geometric shapes, a juxtaposition of diagonal, rectangular and triangular forms creating dynamic movement that transcends the physical plane into the realm of spiritual reality. And the illusion is a slight distortion of the reality. 